Hi, I'm May. Hi, I'm Katie. Let's talk more about world history. But first, hit that subscribe button for more. Enjoy watching! Questions 1. How did Europe's economy rise up during the Middle Ages? 2. What is the key of Europe's economic expansion? 3. How does Christianity and religion begin in medieval Europe? This chapter describes the economic growth of Western Europe, the rise of states, and the clash that took place between medieval monarchs and popes. During the Middle Ages, Western Europe entered a period of growth and vitality. Technological improvements and the cultivation of new lands increased farm production. The population grew, the trade revived, town life was reborn, and serfdom declined. In England and France, kings began to create strong central government that provided greater security. Struggles between the Holy Roman Emperors and the Popes, however, prevented unity in German and Italy. Another important development of the High Middle Ages was a surge in interest in opposing Muslim power. As a result, Europeans took off the offensive against Muslims in Spain in the Near East. Another sign of growing strength was the German expansion into lands along Baltic Sea in Eastern Europe. Chapter Outline 1. The European economy expands. 2. European nations take shape. 3. The Church's authority grows. 4. Christian Europe expands. Topic 1. The European economy expands. Advances are made in agriculture. 1. Agricultural equipments greatly increased farm production. 2. New innovations also made it possible to use farm horses more efficiently. 3. A new method of using land also increased food production. A three-field system gradually replaced the widely used two-field system. New lands are cleared. 1. Large tracts of land in many parts of Europe were cleared and settled. Peasants drained swamps, cut down forests, and established new villages. 2. Vast areas of the continent were brought under cultivation for the first time. 3. Lords encouraged the farming of new lands because the new crops increased their income. It revives. With greater food production and the number of deaths from starvation and dietary disease decreased and population increased. 2. Surplus food meant that a greater number of people were free to work at non-farming tasks such as crafts. 3. The rapid growth of population increased the demand for goods, which brought an expansion of trade. Trade fairs are held. 1. With the revival of trade fairs begun to held regularly at major trading sites. 2. At these fairs, merchants and artisans from many places set up stalls and booths to display their wit. 3. Each fair lasted about 3 to 6 weeks. Then the merchants would move on to another site. 4. To protect traders from robbers, lords provided guards for merchants traveling to and from their fairs. Merchants shared the risk in business ventures. The increase in trade also led to changes in ways of doing business. Individual merchants had limited funds to carry on business. This arrangement reduced the risk because no one merchant had to provide all the money. Banking practices are developed. 1. Money changers developed another new business technique. 2. Money changers kept their coins in strong boxes and people found it convenient to leave their money with them for safekeeping. 4. The money changers eventually came to be called bankers. Young artisans serve an apprenticeship. 1. To become a member of a craft guild, a young person first had to serve as an apprentice to a master artisan. 2. An apprenticeship lasted from 2 to 7 years depending upon the craft. 4. After completing the apprenticeship, the youth became a journeyman, a day laborer who worked for a master for a day of wage. Towns grow and become self-governing. 1. At first, guilds were simply a form of fellowship among artisans. But soon, they began to set regulations and protect their members' merchant guilds prevented outside traders from doing business in a town. 2. The guilds also discouraged competition among their members. They set strict rules to prevent any member from making much more money than the others. Medieval towns are small and crowded. 1. The towns were usually crooked and garbage-cluttered narrow crooked streets. 
2 at street level were the shops of merchants and artisans, many of whom lived above their businesses. 4. Religious processions and executions of criminals attracted large crowds. Opportunities expand for women and serfs. 1. Women had many more opportunities in the towns than the country. On the manor, women worked in the fields, made clothing and did household chores. Middle class developed. 1. Towns brought about the rise of a new social class, the middle class, made up of master artisans, merchants, and their families. And now, we will be showing you a sample pictures that represent life during mid Jubali Europe. Topic 2. European Nations Take Shape Changing Role of Kings Kings have limited authority. 1. Numerous Germanic kingdoms had been established in Europe in the early Middle Ages. Charlemagne had built a large empire, but Europe returned to political disunity when that empire was divided in 843, as the feudal system developed. Changing times bring greater royal power. 1. The feudal lords did not want kings to grow stronger, for they feared that a strong monarch would reduce their power and take away their land. 2. Late in the Middle Ages, this began to happen in France and England. Kings expanded their territories and created a strong central government. Raiders settle in England. 1. The story of early England is one of many invasions. In the year AD 43, armies of the Roman Emperor Claudius had conquered much of the island of Britain, then inhabited by Celtic peoples. 2. The Romans built roads and towns, areas under Roman rule prospered, many Roman soldiers and merchants settled there. Alfred rules England. 1. Ruler of England from 871 to 899, Alfred was a cultural leader as well as a warrior. He established a school at his court and translated Latin works onto Anglo-Saxon language. Norman's conquest increases royal power. 1. In 1066, Normans from northern France invaded England near the seacoast village of Hastings. Through French-speaking, they were descendants of the Vikings who had first raided France and then settled there. William establishes strong central control. 1. William the Conqueror was determined to establish effective control over his new kingdom. 2. He kept the sixth of the land for himself and divided the rest among the Normans' lords or barons. These Norman barons pledged their loyalty to William and promised to provide him with soldiers when needed. The king's courts create common law. The kings who followed William strengthened unity in England by making changes in the legal system. There had been the old Anglo-Saxon law, the French feudal law, and the business laws that had developed in the new towns. William's youngest son, Henry I, during his reign, began the process of establishing a common legal system for all England. He sent royal judges to different parts of the kingdom to try cases. The Magna Carta limits royal power. Magna Carta, which means Greater Charter, in the famous document, the king agreed to recognize the barons' rights and privileges, including that of a fair trial. He also agreed that the taxes could not be collected without the consent of a council of advisors. The principles of Magna Carta First, taxation only with representation. Magna Carta stated that no unusual taxes shall be imposed in our kingdom except the common council of our kingdom. Over centuries, this came to mean that the English monarch had to have the consent of a people's representatives to levy taxes. And 
right to trial. The Magna Carta provided that no freeman can be taken, imprisoned, disposed, or banished, or in any way destroyed, except by the lawful judgment of his peers, or social equals, or by the law of the land. Third, limits to power. Implied in the Magna Carta was the notion that monarch had no right to rule in any way they pleased but rather had to govern the law. Parliament grows in power. The Magna Carta placed some limits on the power of the English monarch. Other limits grow out to the development of the English Parliament. Parliament had its roots in Anglo-Saxon traditions. Before making decisions, the Anglo-Saxon rulers had sought the advice of important men in the kingdom. Foundations are laid for limited monarchy. Thus, there emerged in England during the Middle Ages a strong king, a centralized government, and a unified state. The rights of the peoples were protected by basic principles made clear in the common law, the Magna Carta, and the rights of Parliament. French kings build a unified state. Early French kings lacked power. William of Normandy had conquered England on one stroke and had firmly established royal power. The road to national unity in France was more difficult. France had been the western part of Charlemagne's empire by the end of the 10th century. It was a patchwork of territories ruled by feudal lords. French kings seek territory. The descendants of Georges Capet, who are known as the Capetian kings, held the throne of France until 1328. It took centuries for them to create a unified state. Their first objective was to add to their territory. The French kings used every means they could to get more land. The French regained land from English rulers. England across the English Channel was a major obstacle to French unity. England across the English monarch controlled much of France. Henry I inherited the other French territories from his father, the Count of Aquitaine, who ruled much of southern France. French monarchs strengthened royal power. Philip's successor continued to add to the royal land. Louis IX, whose reign lasted from 1226 to 1217, made changes in legal matters to strengthen royal power. He drew up the first laws and applied throughout the kingdom and outlawed the private warfare. Germany and Italy remained divided. German lords resist central authority. The German lands had formed the eastern part of the Charlemagne's empire. When the empire collapsed, the German lands were broken into large duchies, lands ruled by dukes. Following an ancient Germanatic practice, the dukes elected a fellow noble as king. German kings tries to re-establish Rome's empire. In 962, Otto convinced the Pope to crown him Emperor of the Romans. Like Charlemagne, Otto wanted this title to indicate that he had inherited the power of ancient Rome as well as the back king of the church. Later, German kings all claimed the title, and the lands they ruled came to be called the Holy Roman Empire. Italy remains divided. Like the German land, Italy remained divided during the Middle Ages. By the 14th century, Italy was broken into several regions. Northern Italy was divided into mainly rich and independent city-states that were often at war with each other. In Central Italy, the Pope ruled the Papal State. These pictures illustrate European empires. Topic 3. The Church's Authority Grows The Church political involvements bring calls for reform. Early in the 10th century, the Church faced many problems. For some leading families in Italy, the papacy had become a political price. People who were aware of this plotting had little respect for the papacy. 
the authority of the papacy was further weakened by orgs who collected income from church taxes and appointed the bishops and abbots in their own region. This gave the lords control over the churches and monasteries in their territories. Bishops and abbots who were chosen for political reasons often lacked religious devotion. The Pope and the Holy Roman Emperor Clash The most zealous supporter of reform was a Benedictine monk named Hildebrand, who became Pope Gregory VII in 1073. Gregory believed that the Pope's mission was to establish a Christian society on earth. To fulfill this mission, Gregory demanded that the Holy Roman Emperor submit to papal authority. The disagreement becomes a struggle over authority. Gregory claimed that as Pope, he could depose the Emperor remove him from the throne. Henry would not accept such control. He persuaded the German bishop who were his vassals to declare Gregory disposed. Pope Gregory, in turn, decided in 1076 to excommunicate Henry, in other words, to expel him from the church. The decree of excommunication read, I declare Henry deprived of his kingdom in Germany and Italy because he was rebelled against the church. Henry seeks forgiveness. The German bishops hesitated to support Henry, fearing they might also be excommunicated. The German nobles seized the opportunity to strike at Henry's power, and civil war swept through Germany. Matters grew worse when the nobles invited Pope Gregory to travel to Germany to crown a new emperor. To stop the Pope, Henry journeyed to Italy in January 1077. He hoped to persuade Gregory to lift the ban excommunication. This would deprive the German lords of their legal justification for rebellion. Henry arrived at Canossa, where Gregory was a guest of Matilda of Tuscany, who ruled much of central Italy and was one of the Pope's strongest supporters. For three days, the German Emperor stood barefoot in the snow outside the castle walls until Pope Gregory accepted his plea for forgiveness. Church and state reach a compromise. Years later, in 1122, the church and the new Holy Roman Emperor, Henry V, reached a compromise at the city of Worms. In Germany, the compromise, called the Concordat of Worms, ruled that monarchs had no authority over the church. Conflict weakens the Holy Roman Emperor's authority. The Concordat did not end the conflict between the Papacy and the Holy Roman Emperor. Popes continued to claim that kings and emperors were subordinate to the papacy. The Holy Roman Emperor, on the other hand, claimed supremacy over the papacian, also tried to get control of the prosperous northern Italian city-states. The papacy reaches the height of its power. The high point of papal power was reached under Innocent III, who stated that the Pope, lower than God but higher than man, judges all and judged by no one. Innocent is made the papacy the center of European political life. He claimed that the Pope had the right to intervene in the internal affairs of any kingdom. For example, when King John of England ignored the Pope's wishes, Innocent excommunicated John and issued an order that in effect closed the churches in England. Crimes against the church are punished. Popes believed that they had a sacred mission to show people the way to salvation. For this reason, they fought monarchs who challenged papal authority. For the same reason, they opposed heresy, that is, the holding of beliefs that the church considered wrong. Freedom of religion is a modern idea that had no place in the medieval outlook. The clergy thought that people had to obey God's rules exactly as taught by the church. Heresy was the greatest crime in the Middle Ages. The church held that the heretics, or people declared guilt of heresy, had committed treason against God. The church's authority is challenged. In the 12th and 13th centuries, several groups challenged the teachings of the church. One of these groups was the Waldenses, followers of Peter Waldo, a rich French merchant who gave away his property to the poor in 1170. The Waldenses preached the gospel in the language of the people, rather than the Latin. They also accused the clergy of leading immoral lives. Church authorities commended the movement as heretical and excommunicated Waldo. The Inquisition punishes heresy. In 1232, Pope Gregory IX set up the Inquisition, a church court that sought out the tried people suspected of being heretics. The accused people were urged to confess their heresy and to ask forgiveness. 
Sometimes, torture was used to make people admit to heresy. If they confessed, they were given minor punishment and welcomed back to the church. If they did not confess or if they held to their beliefs, they were turned over to the government authorities for punishment. Heretics might lose their property, be exiled or imprisoned, or be executed by burning at the stake. Religious orders are formed. Zeal for reform also led to the establishment of two orders of friars, the Franciscans and the Dominicans. The Dominican order was founded by Saint Dominic, a Spanish nobleman. As a reaction against the Albigensians, known as the Praying Friars, the Dominicans included some of the leading teachers of religion in medieval universities. European lands are recaptured from the Muslims. In the 11th century, the Italian city-states Genoa and Pisa drove Muslims from the island of Sardinia. By the end of the century, Norman knights had retaken Sicily from the Muslims. Italian began to patrol the western Mediterranean, preventing the Muslims from attacking Christian ships. This gave the Italian city-states an open route to the rich markets of the eastern Mediterranean. This picture illustrates church authority at medieval Europe. Or Christian Europe expand. European lands are recaptured from the Muslims. In the 11th century, the Italian city-states Genoa and Pisa drove Muslims from the island of Sardinia. By the end of the century, Norman knights had retaken Sicily from the Muslims. Italian began to patrol the western Mediterranean, preventing the Muslims from attacking Christian ships. This gave the Italian city-states an open route to the rich markets of the eastern Mediterranean. The Pope calls for a crusade. Meanwhile, at the 11th century, Europeans decided to carry the struggle against Islam into the eastern Mediterranean. Turkish Muslims had gained control of the Holy Land. In 1095, Pope Urban II appealed to the lords and knights of Europe to liberate the Holy Land from the Muslims. The Pope wanted Jerusalem to be in Christian hands. Moreover, he hoped that the knights and lords would stop warning among themselves and fight for the Christian, because the recovery of the Holy Land. Pope Urban's appeal created great excitement. Lords and knights, eager for glory, adventure and wealth, began to organize armies. Crusades by common people failed. The spirit of the crusades spread in Western Europe. Some preachers wandered through the villages, urging the common people to take part in the crusades. The most remarkable of these preachers was Peter the Hermit. Peter rode a donkey through the French countryside, calling the peasants to become crusaders. Thousands of poor people abandoned their villages and joined Peter's march. Few of the peasant crusaders ever reached Jerusalem. Peter's army made its way to Constantinople only to be destroyed by the Turks in Asia Minor. Christian forces captured Jerusalem. The first major crusade was more carefully planned than the peasant undertakings. Lords and knights gathered to form an army in the spring of 1097. The army assembled in Constantinople. From the capital of Byzantine Empire, the knights crossed to Asia Minor. A crusader described the hardships they encountered in that peninsula. The Christian army arrived at Antioch and captured it from the Turks after a long siege. In June 1099, three years after leaving their homes, the crusaders stood outside the walls of the Jerusalem. Five weeks later, the Christian captured the city. The Muslims regained some lands. In what became known as the First Crusade, the Knights of Europe had won a victory. They had captured Jerusalem and carved out four Christian states in the Near East. Yet, these Christian states were like islands in a Muslim sea. Their chance of surviving was small. The Crusaders lead to change. In the beginning, the Crusades had strengthened the power of the papacy. It was the Pope who had inspired the Crusading armies and acted as their spiritual leader. Later, Popes, however, called for Crusades against heretics and rulers who resisted papal commands. German expand eastward. The reconquest of Spain and the Crusades were signs of the growing strength of Christian Europe in the High Middle Ages. A third sign was the German conquest and colonization of areas south of the Baltic Sea. Several factors led to this expansion. Lords hoped to carve out new estates, while peasants wanted land of their own and freedom from the burden of manorial obligations.
the German expansion brings change to Eastern Europe. The German expansion eastward had important consequences. Thousands of German settlers, merchants, and missionaries moved into the Baltic Sea region. Towns were established in places where urban life had been virtually unknown. To answer the question at the start of this video, here is the summary of this chapter. The High Middle Ages from 1050 to 1270 was a period of vitality for Western Europe. Improvements in agricultural technology and the cultivation of new land increased food production and led to population growth. Trade revived, banking practices developed, and merchants and artisans formed guilds. The growth of towns contributed to the decline of serfdom and led to the rise of the middle class. Powerful rulers laid the foundation of modern European states. England was unified soon after the Norman conquest in 1056, but it took French kings centuries to create a unified state. The development of Parliament and the Magna Carta limited the power of the English monarch. There are no similar checks on the French king. The Church often claimed a role of European politics which led to quarrels with the Holy Roman Emperor and the other monarchs. These quarrels prevented the development of unified states in Germany and Italy. Reform movements, the subduing of heresy, and the emergence of religious orders revealed the vitality of the Church in this period. Additional signs of European strength were the conquest of Muslim lands in the German conquest and colonization of lands along Baltic coasts. Crusades, an attempt by Europeans to take control of the Holy Land from the Muslim Church, while ending in failure, the Crusades led to important changes. They contributed to the decline of feudalism in Europe and stimulated trade between Europe and the East. I am Caitlin Bilasa Dasa. I am May Magayon de Guzman. BSed second year major in social studies, Palawan State University, Rojas Campus. Saying, we can do this para sa bayan at sa kinabukasan. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you again. Till another discussion. Bye!